I really am so thrilled and pleased to bring you this following interview, which we did with Lisa Contier, and she's from Gluten Free Find. So she set up Gluten Free Find, and also um, she's a co creator of glutenfreesmartstore.com. And uh, she's uh, in North America, she's in Canada, and it was really fantastic to catch up with her a few weeks ago uh, at her home in Toronto. First of all, because we haven't spoken to many people in and around Canada. So in the first part of our two-part interview, we're going to be hearing about the background to Lisa. In part two, we're going to hear a bit more about going free in Canada as well. But as I said at the top of the show, I would really urge you to listen to this. I mean, I don't want to give too much away about what is upcoming. I don't want to set it up too much. But boy, oh boy, when Lisa told me her life story... I nearly had to pick myself up off the floor. I hope that you're listening to this and you can listen to it in its entirety and you may just want to make sure that whatever you're doing, you can perhaps put it down for a few minutes. You'll hear what develops as we hear from Lisa Contier on the G-Free radio show. My website is glutenfreefind.com. And it's an online resource directory where people can access information um, about businesses and just about every topic under the sun that deals with gluten-free. And the focus is on healthy living and healthy finds. So as you know, there are many different types of products out there on the market, whether it be in Europe or North America. Um, But only a certain percentage of them are actually healthy and good for us. And this is the point, isn't it? There's a view with some that that GF is healthy, but that's not necessarily true, is it? Oh, absolutely. So sugar is added to so many products, not only for the taste, but also as a preservative. So there's lots of added ingredients to products, um, and therefore they're all not as healthy as we would like them to be in terms of, you know, when it comes to prepackaged foods. Obviously not really day-to-day foods, more, more of them are treats, but you make sure that you stock the healthier foods, is that right? Right, so on our website we're really promoting the companies that offer products free of refined sugars, flours, starches. Um, we're, we're promoting companies that are GMO-free, organic, eco-friendly, good for our overall health. Because more and more people seem to be diagnosed with various food allergies, don't they? And and I'm wondering, Lisa, what what do you put that down to? Is that what we're eating or more stress or chemicals or or pollutants in the air or GMO crops? What what, what do you think it is? Well, certainly uh, much more research is needed to answer that very difficult question. But my feeling is it's probably a combination of all of the factors you've just mentioned. Um, I recently wrote an article about and did some research about um, GMO wheat and its impact on our bodies and how wheat has been modifying people, so to speak. So I do believe that genetically modified foods and environmental factors probably are playing a significant role in some of the developing allergies such as gluten um, intolerance and sensitivity. And the more natural foods that you mentioned there, are are they readily available in the stores, the supermarkets, the grocery shops and and shelves in, in Canada? Well, we do have a good number of food producers and manufacturers in Canada. We're not all country Uh, landscape. We do have lots of major cities and lots of industry. Um, And, you know, it is easier for food companies to use science and formulas that require or call for, um, you know, ingredients to preserve them, such as sugar and, you know, um, other ingredients that are not extremely healthy. It, however, it's definitely possible, and there are many companies that are taking different routes. So there are other sweeteners, as you know, on the market that are far more healthy than refined sugars. Um, and companies are becoming more and more wa- aware of the demand for healthy products 
And I think they're making more of a conscious effort to produce foods that are, you know, more nutritionally valuable. So you've got an expertise in, in food and nutrition. Tell us about your story, because this, this is amazing. Uh, everyone's story is, is, is unique, is, is totally different, but yours particularly so. And without putting perhaps too fine a point on it, you were almost given up for dead at one point, weren't you? Yes, I was um, diagnosed with celiac disease at a time when the statistic was one in 4,000 or greater. And it was in the late 70s. I was a toddler failing to thrive, about a year and a half old, and I was not absorbing my foods. I was just literally wasting away. And I was in the hospital for nearly two months before specialists could determine what was wrong with me. I was actually diagnosed with terminal cancer and I was literally on my way out the door. And one day with my meal, there was a banana. I chose to eat the banana, nothing else on the plate. And it was the first time that I had eaten a meal and not gotten sick. So the nurses had documented that and then doctors finally put two and two together and realized this may be a food issue. And I was reading earlier about your story, and you mentioned the phrase the big C, little C battle, and I've not heard that phrase before. Yes, that's right. That's what they called it back then uh, in the 70s, because so many children and toddlers, kids my age, were, being, were mistakenly diagnosed with cancer. Because we presented, you know, as someone who's not absorbing your nutrients, you know, with diet and food being of such importance to every aspect of our health and every um, system of our body, my body was falling apart because I was not absorbing nutrients at all. My um, small intestine was just breaking down. So, so you're saying that in the late 70s and early 80s, before celiac disease was properly being diagnosed, some children were pumped with drugs in the mistaken belief that they had cancer? We don't have any actual research or data, but this is what many doctors and health professionals speculate, that it was extremely common for my situation to happen, and I'm sure it happened prior to that time as well. Who knows how many children and toddlers actually lost their life because of undiagnosed celiac disease were, you know, a lot of experts believe there were many across North America and probably in Europe as well. That, that is truly shocking. I've not heard of that at all before. Gosh, I mean, you must count yourself pretty damn lucky extremely and I believe that that little girl who came so close to crossing the line of passing away really had a purpose and so I really try as you know my best to educate people about celiac disease and gluten-free living to the best of my ability and first of all your mum stepped in championing you obviously and helping you and others like you that's right she helped bring about the first um, support groups for celiacs in Toronto where we were living and uh, as well as bringing the first gluten-free products to mainstream grocery store shelves and at that time there was actually only one brand in Toronto and the surrounding area. So we've had the wonderful opportunity to launch a second site, an online store with TV chef Kathy Smart and we're partnered with Allergic Solution which is a baking mix manufacturer for allergen-free baking mixes and we've launched um, Canada's only um, online gluten-free store. A lot of people are quite surprised to see how many companies there are out there right now. That's probably the biggest shock to so many people that lived my story back in the day to see how the gluten-free diet has become so needed and how there is so much more choice now than there ever was. Your mum must be so proud of you. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I believe so, yes. You can uh, get in touch with Elisa via glutenfreefind.com. On Twitter, that's at glutenfreefind. Or glutenfreesmartstore.com. On Twitter, that's gfreesmartstore.